Hello, my name is Brian Brush. I'm a training chief at Midwest City Fire Department in Midwest City, Oklahoma. I'm a member of the IFC. I hold my executive fire officer designation. I'm also in the graduate program at Oklahoma State University in fire and emergency management. I'm uh, excited to be presenting to you today. Uh, my presentation is going to be Mountains of Data, a Pile of Ashes. This presentation is designed to demonstrate the unintentional yet tragic blind spot that exists in our over 40 years of fire service reporting. And also to show that we have the opportunity to recover from this by reestablishing our mission and adjusting our metrics to measure that mission. Nearly 50 years ago, the nation hit a tipping point of anger with more than 11,000 Americans dying in fires every year. When the Congressional and Professional Committee was established to address it, one of the greatest challenges was no true point of reference. Even after the publication of America Burning, with all the recommendations that were pushed forward and the monies committed, it still took five years before they were able to publish an accurate fire loss report for the year. America Burning is considered one of the seminal documents for the American Fire Service and truly established us as a modern service. Almost 50 years later, in one of the most advanced nations in the world, we are dealing with nearly the same verbatim problem statement with regard to fire service data. To anyone who's ever completed a fire service infers report, this should drive you nuts. The fact that we have uh, advanced this far in our data collection and reporting and are still lacking so much information from that data, it is truly disappointing. So my critical thinking question to all of you is that given almost 50 years, is the American fire problem truly fire or is it data collection? When I think about the progress we've made over the last 46 years, the National Fire Academy infers, SCBAs, radios, all of these points of progress, it seems like we should be better at improving outcomes in regards to firefighting. When we look at some of the metrics we've collected in 40 years, we have reduced the number of home fires from 1.2 million a year to just 390,000. We've taken that number of civilian fire fatalities down from over 12,000 to about 3,600 in 2018. We are showing progress, but what is the true depth of that progress? When we look at the firefighter side, from the perspective of a firefighter, a firefighter-centric evaluation of our data, we've made tremendous strides. In 1970s, the average death rate for a firefighter was about 2.5 per 100,000 structure fires. Over the last three years, that number has fallen to less than one per 100,000 fires. In 2017, there was only one firefighter who suffered a traumatic death inside a structure fire. That was Scott Deem of the San Antonio Fire Department. So what are we missing? America Burning was essentially the new deal for the fire service, creating everything from the National Fire Academy to INFERS. We've had such deep investments in training, technology, standards, and professionalization and yet the current position of the U.S. Fire Administration is that we're still unable to measure or quantify our nation's fire problem. So let's take a little bit deeper look at the data. 40 years of our data shows that we aren't making the progress we think we are. I was once told that the through line is the true line. The black line spanning 40 years is the connection from 1980 to 2020 in the civilian death rate per thousand home fires. The only thing we can truly demonstrate is that in 40 years, we've reduced the frequency of fires, yet we've made no measurable difference in the severity of fires with regard to civilian life. If my interpretation of the graph isn't enough, you can look about just about every NFPA report that has been published in recent years. Both the total number of home fires and the total number of home fire deaths has been cut in half. Unfortunately, the outcome for the civilians at home in regard to fire is unchanged. In fact, pretty quickly here, we'll show you that it's getting worse. So in short, we are essentially just riding the wave of the reduction in the frequency of events. How are we getting away with this? What other industry, profession, team, or organization would tolerate 40 years with no demonstration of success? I was born in 1980, I've made it my operational side of the fire service my life's work. And yet my wife and kids are at no greater odds of surviving a home fire today than I did when I was an infant 40 years ago. If I had gotten into fire prevention 
instead of a fire and engine. If I'd have worked on code enforcement and prevention practices, I could sleep with a clear conscience. Fire prevention is working. They are demonstrating consistent results year over year, reducing the number of fires. Unfortunately, those of us who have dedicated our careers to operations, doing our work in our streets, responding to these incidents, intervening at the operational level, we essentially have a net zero gain. I believe in that all that was born out of America burning has great value. The attention it brought to the threat of fire, the reduction in injuries, the reduction in the number of civilian fatalities, the mechanisms, the support systems, the modernization, the professionalism it's brought to our service is priceless. The unfortunate truth is that given all of those things, we still face an unclear fire problem with unclear vision and unclear mission. And therefore, our existence, our very existence may be unclear. When it comes to true success, everything starts with a vision, and everything starts with mission. In the 1970s, America was burning. There was great tragedy in this country with nearly 12,000 civilian fire fatalities every single year. Anything we could do to reduce the number of fires and the number of fire-related deaths was going to be a win. And that became the mission, in print and in data collection the reduction of death. The pre-established mission was the reduction of death. So to evaluate our data set for accomplishments against that mission, the mission from the original America Burning was reduction in death. When reporting is analyzed, you can see that this was the mark, but unfortunately it has run its course. As we can see here, even in 2019, we are reducing fire deaths. Reducing fire deaths continues to be the mission. It continues to be what we're looking at. Unfortunately, in our data set, NFPA is stating that the reduction in deaths is purely connected to the reduction of fires, that we have not actually reduced the harm once a fire is reported. We can only prevent so many incidents. If you need to see how damaging this is for the operational side of the fire service, here it is in black and white. NFPA states that there are five major strategies for reducing the death toll. They are all preventative measures public safety education, smoke alarms, residential sprinklers, safer at home products, and targeting at risk populations. Operations has such a poor track record as an intervention in the American fire problem that there's no mention of improved training, improved staffing, improved funding, greater operations. All of the death reduction measures and strategies are targeted at prevention. We are failing to execute on the operational side and our data set is actually dismissing us. And it's beyond these reports. Even in reducing fire deaths, we are now starting to fail. Our time has run out. Over the last decade, it's shown that civilian fire fatalities are actually up 20 and a half percent while fires continue to go down two and a half percent reduction in fires and an increase of 20.5 percent civilian fire fatalities. This is of great concern. For years and years and years we had a essentially a, a participation ribbon in reducing fire deaths because of the reduction of fires. But now fires are reduced and yet civilian fire fatalities are up. What are we missing? Why can't the experts tell us what's going on with all that they have access to? Remember, I asked, do we have a fire problem or a data problem? It's very clear when the data set is evaluated by the professionals and analyzed that we do have a data problem. How much is that data problem affecting our fire problem? I think in this single slide, we have three major reports, each one of them explaining the data set limitations, yet none of them are able to quantify it. Each one reporting a significant fire problem remains yet none of them are able to pinpoint why we have not been able to move the needle. Using the inductive research process through the observation of this pattern in a review of 40 years of similar reports from these same organizations and these same data sets, the theory has been developed that it is the quantitative nature and the collection of only negative inputs and losses that has resulted in a myopic data set. We're only getting one angle of the fire problem. 
For almost 50 years, all we have measured is the parameters of our problem, the number of fires, the number of injuries, the dollars lost, and the fatalities totaled. By inputting only negative information, we are only ne evaluating negative outcomes. When I think back to the spring of 2020, at the peak of the COVID-19 concern, all that was re being reported were the number of cases and the number of fatalities. In the context of the pandemic, both were negative inputs. The dashboard style graphs of rolling numbers were purely quantitative and it dehumanized the losses to just digits. It was truly a dark time for the United States. When we started to see the light, it was because about two months into COVID-19, we started to shift, not only seeing the parameters of our problem, but starting to understand the dimensions of our success. This took two things, a conscious decision to measure interventions and positive outcomes, and the second was a period of time for that data set to develop. Only when we're able to compare the parameters of our problems to the dimensions of our success are we truly able to evaluate the effectiveness of our mission. The American Fire Service has never been able to determine if operations are actually saving more civilians from fire because we have never measured operational interventions. The absence of operational direction provided by the established reporting mechanisms and data sets has never been called into question because there never has been a comparison. We've only been looking at one side of the problem and we've never measured the dimensions of our success. We say that life safety is our priority until it comes to reporting data. We make statements like we will risk a lot to save a lot. Yet since the establishment of modern fire service reporting and data collection, all that we have recorded is injuries and deaths. As long as we are failing to record lives saved, we will be unable to analyze the actions and methods that are responsible for it. When all that is recorded as losses, all that can be determined is how bad we are losing. Medical practice centers on saving lives. Researchers and practitioners work closely together on the execution of that mission. Most medical practices are guided by the evaluation of outcome-based data, and the desired outcome is condition improvement. Our scholars are failing in data collection, and our warriors are failing in protecting their charges, and it has gone on for too long. For 50 years, we've been dealing with the same fire service problem. I would argue that at this point, gross negligence is a significant threat to our existence as a service. And I think we not look too far to find examples. So when I challenge you today, I think that all the advancements that we have made, technologically, infrastructure, support, all that has been processed in the fire service in the last 46 years, our fire problem is no longer material. Today our fire problem is existential. Even if we retain the notion that we exist to reduce death, the last decade of data is showing that we are losing every day. We must refocus. The fast approaching 50 year anniversary of America burning, coinciding with a trend in increased civilian fire fatalities, serves as both a chilling climate and a call to action. We must reframe our mission. I did not get into the fire service to passively reduce death. I have committed my entire professional career to operations, and I believe in being an active participant. Unfortunately, on paper, it is clear that all that dedication to our professional work has done nothing to protect the most valuable things in my personal life. My wife and my children are at greater risk of not making it through a house fire than I was when I was their age. We must change the direction of the fire service for the next 40 years. Once again, saving lives is demonstrated by taking those in harm's way and removing them from harm with the lowest impact for the greatest possible outcome. Reduction of death is just a mission in lowering numbers. It is not enough for me, nor should be for anyone in this profession to be measured purely on losing less, when all we signed up for is to dedicate countless additional hours above and beyond in training and study to save more. Our mission should be saving lives. Our metrics should be saving lives. Success starts when we stop viewing information like this as a press release 
and start seeing it as a data collection point. When we are reporting to the media that we had a three minute response time, that the victim was found inside a compartmentalized room with the door closed, and that we removed them unconscious and not breathing, yet resuscitated them or brought them back to life with a cyano kit. These are the things that we should be collecting. This is the information which changes outcomes. What we have been telling reporters is what we should have been recording. We know the value of this. We just missed the up priority. The potential value of positive inputs like lives saved, injuries avoided, and qualitative information, those first-hand accounts. Look at the firefighter near-miss reporting system. The National Fire Service got behind this wholeheartedly to learn from those close calls, to avoid significant injuries and fatalities later. For the last 10 years, there's been significant improvement in firefighter safety as a result of this data set. Is there a correlation between the existence of this data set, the information that's been collected here, and the increased safety of our firefighters showing up in the data? Once again, if we existed to save firefighter lives, I think we could compare that mission to the data and appropriately demonstrate success. We have reduced the firefighter injury and death per 100,000 fires in a significant way. That rate has been reduced. Unfortunately, there is no civilian fire victim near miss reporting system. There's no data set to evaluate against to determine if the mission of doing more to save firefighters is doing less to save civilians. If we do not get actively involved in filling this information gap, someone from the outside our profession will begin to draw these conclusions. How are firefighters becoming safer every single day and yet the civilians are at greater risk every single day. We must become actively involved in taking care of these records, in taking care of this information, in collecting this data set. Because at this point, our own records are strengthening the opposing case. The Firefighter Rescue Survey was developed in 2015 by a group of firefighters to address this information gap. It was organically created as a data collection method to survey and create a collective qualitative data set with richer pool information from firsthand accounts as to how firefighters were saving civilian lives and how many civilian lives were being saved. While the current sample size is relatively small, the proof of concept is present. When we look at met metrics and mission, we can see it in this data set. As I mentioned before, we need to compare the accomplishments and opportunities against the mission. When we look at the current reporting on rescues and we look at our data sets, we can show that difference. Infers has no reportable data sets on rescues or patient outcomes. The US Fire Administration says in this area, the lack of data, especially for residential fatal fires, mass the true picture of our fire problem. But now we look at the Firefighter Rescue Survey. With just over a thousand reported rescues, you can truly distill operational information in regards to outcomes and metrics. For victims located within eight minutes of arrival, survivability is over 60%, as compared to 15% when patients are located after eight minutes hard data on the importance of time and intervention is critical to change things for us, our outcomes. When we look at the Close Before You Doze campaign, that information took 10 years to truly develop, millions of dollars of study and labs for us to tell citizens across the nation that they are safer behind closed doors. With just 500 civilian rescues submitted to the Firefighter Rescue Survey, it was clear 24% of victims were located behind a closed door. When that population was compared to people found in open compartments, the closed door group had an 84% survival rate. The fire service has had the potential to tell the world how many people were saving from fires and what is saving them from fires. And we've ignored it it's no longer something we should ignore. We must value 
qualitative data in the fire service, the richness of firsthand accounts from our survivors and our rescuers, the limitations of our traditional quantitative and negative input only data set can't show us how many lives we are saving or how we are saving them. Yet in just four years of the firefighter rescue survey data set, it demonstrates that rescues, survival rates, removal methods, times, locations, and resource commitment. We can begin to take this information and shape our operations. Ladder rescues have the highest survival rate at 76%. I think that would help in driving our success in operations on the fire ground, getting victims immediately to fresh air through the safest path. Training, operations, even apparatus spec can be driven from these numbers. The current limitation of the Firefighter Rescue Survey is that it is a passive data collection system. Due to the construct of the survey being operated at a grassroots level, there's currently no funding for advertising or reach. There is no official organization or institutional support, and submissions are voluntary action, dependent on the rescuers or the department having awareness of the initiative. Starting on January 1st of 2021 through a practicum project for a period of one quarter, the work will be done to conduct an active survey collection through direct contact with fire departments that are reported to or documented to have a civilian fire rescue. <clears throat> the data from this period will be coded and analyzed to compare it to past data, determine the degree of change between passive and direct contact collection methods. At the end of that year, an annual report will be created and published so that the data set can support evidence-based operational decisions. In contacting departments to request the rescue survey, educational information as to the potential impact the data, the, the data set can have on our operations will be provided to them as well as a template for a rescue reporting standard operating procedure so that this process will maintain organizational sustainability. We have to make sure rescue reporting becomes a part of our institution, something that has continued going forward. For too long, people have placed their faith in our abilities to come save them. And for too long, we've gone without demonstrating that we are. It is time for us to work and ensure that their faith is appropriately placed in our abilities, that we are backing it up with true data, and that we are making great efforts for that data to drive us in the direction of improving in the area of making those rescues. It is time that the fire service moves to a human-centric and data-driven operation that surrounds us. Let us work to restore their faith by backing it up with real support. I thank you for the time to make this presentation. You may contact me through the Midwest City Fire Department or Oklahoma State University at brush at okstate.edu.